I, I, it's weird to say, but technically, I think when you sign those papers, they're legit. Chaos reigns in the world of open wheel racing. Alex Pillow has signed to two different open wheel teams and potentially in two different open wheel teams in two different series. Chip Ganassi Racing, whom Alex Pillow won an IndyCar championship for, announced that he was returning to the team for 2023. But in a shocking turn of events, Alex Pillow then turned around and not only denied that that was a true report, but announced minutes later that he was joining Aero McLaren SP. Hopefully you're not too confused by that, but if you are, this video is going to explain the entire situation up until this point, including some of my own reporting on the situation uh, that I didn't even kind of realize I was doing at the time. You'll see some quotes from some drivers at Mid-Ohio that I interviewed uh, about Silly Season. I wasn't quite anticipating that it was going to be this silly. We'll also talk about contracts because that's something that I've been yelled at by a couple of insiders uh, over the last 24 hours that I need to talk about more because ultimately one team owner does actually hold all the cards in this situation and uh, really kind of controls where Alex Pillow ends up next year officially. So let's go back to mid-Ohio because this is when I had an opportunity uh, to look Alex Pillow in the eye and ask him what was happening with him in 2023. Now at the time, there had been rumors about him leaving Chip Ganassi Racing to go to, at the time, Aero McLaren SP. This is what he had to say at the time about those rumors as well as Chip Ganassi Racing. 2023. Yeah. Uh, what's your status? I know there's been a couple rumors out there. Um, can you address any only of those? A couple. Only, uh, a couple. only a couple. Yeah, I, I, I don't have anything to say part of what uh, Chip and the team says. So uh, it's all good. I'm happy. It's, uh, it's sunny uh, around the team. It's sunny everywhere. So it's all good. Okay, so we can read between the lines a little bit on that one. Now, when I heard that, you know, face-to-face -face interview, my interpretation, my reading between the lines in my own words, was that Alex Pillow was happy at Chip Ganassi Racing and he would be staying there. As it turns out, well, originally it was announced that Alex Pillow would be returning to Chip Ganassi Racing because we got a press release that said Chip Ganassi Racing was happy to extend Alex Pillow's contract into 2023 and we even got a quote from Alex himself, allegedly. Pillow was quoted in the press release as saying this, It's a great feeling knowing I'll be back with Chip Ganassi Racing next season, said Alex Pillow. The team welcomed me with open arms from day one, and I'm excited to continue working with Chip, Mike Hull, and with the folks on the number 10 NTT data car and everyone within this organization. The goals remain the same, and we will continue to work relentlessly towards achieving them. Shortly afterwards, Alex Pillow took to Twitter with a three-part statement, which read, I have recently learned from the media that this afternoon, without my approval, Chip Ganassi Racing issued a press release announcing that I would be driving with CGR in 2023. Even more surprising was that CGR's release included a quote-unquote quote, which did not come from me. As I did not approve that press release, and I did not author or approve that quote. As I have recently informed CGR for personal reasons, I do not intend to continue with the team after 2022. This evening's unfortunate events aside, I have great respect for the CGR team and look forward to finishing the season strongly together. Minutes after this, Alex Polo announced that he was signing with McLaren Racing specifically tagging F1, McLaren F1. And that's not to be confused with Aero McLaren SP, which is specifically the IndyCar team. The sequence of events is that McLaren F1 announced that, uh, that Alex Pillow would be joining the team, and Aero McLaren SP simply retweeted this. Pillow said in the McLaren press release, which I assume 
is actually something he said, or perhaps it's not, because we learned yesterday that that I guess this is a fairly regular occurrence for quotes to be fabricated in press releases, but this is what Polo allegedly said to McLaren. I'm extremely excited to join the driver roster for such an iconic team as McLaren. I'm excited to be able to show what I can do behind the wheel of a Formula One car and looking at what doors that may open. I want to thank everyone at Chip Ganassi Racing for everything they have done for me. Now, let's go back to my interview with Alex Pillow at Mid-Ohio and listen to a very specific quote because at the time, as I mentioned, I thought, well, Alex Pillow's staying at Chip Ganassi Racing. But when you start reading between the lines, really reading between the lines, listen to this line again and I'll explain why it's important. I don't have anything to say part of what uh, Chip and the team says. So. so listening to that quote now with the context, I believe that Alex Polo and Alex Polo's people, meaning I guess McLaren now, <laughs> are they his people? I guess we're going to find out. They were waiting for Chip Ganassi Racing to make the first move. Now what that first move is, we don't know. I can assume a couple of potentialities, and neither of them end with Alex Pillow being at Chip Ganassi Racing in 2023. The first one is that Ganassi would extend his option on Pillow, and at that time, as we saw what happened, uh, Pillow would announce that, uh, no, I actually am not returning to Chip Ganassi Racing next year. I'm going to Aero McLaren SP. Or Chip Ganassi Racing would announce that Alex Pillow and the team would part ways at the end of the year. That would have been uh, the good scenario, at least from McLaren and Alex Pillow's standpoint. Unfortunately, fortunately for, for us who talk about this, they have chosen the messy scenario. And now we have quite a mess on our hands. Why, though? That is the key question that I've been wrestling with this entire last 24 hours. Why would Alex pull up? Because that's the thing. When these rumors first came out, I said to myself, what benefits Alex Pillow to leave Chip Ganassi Racing, where he's a championship contender, can win virtually every race he enters? Why? Well, there have been some rumors that came out, to, uh, I guess, again, in the last 24 hours, really last night, but last 24 hours, that said that Alex Pillow after winning the championship, demanded more money, demanded a more Scott Dixon-like salary. Scott Dixon, uh, while it, no IndyCar driver salaries are published, is been widely known for a very long time to be the highest paid driver in the series. So, Polo, naturally, because I think not only the outsiders, or maybe fairly insiders, looking at Alex Polo saw him as the next Scott Dixon, well, the next Scott Dixon at Chip Ganassi Racing, you would think maybe he should be paid like Scott Dixon. But the problem I have with that is why would you burn that bridge when the contract you originally signed had an extra year as an option anyway? Um, to burn the bridge in this way publicly over that doesn't make enough sense. But remember back to the McLaren press release, because I mentioned a very key point in that. And that is that the McLaren press release says nothing about Alex Pillow driving Indy cars for the team. The only thing it says anything about is Alex Pillow testing Formula One cars. Enter Daniel Ricciardo, or perhaps as he will be known for a while, the driver that Alex Polo will replace. Ricardo had a statement today. Let's take a look at it. Because there have been a lot of rumors about his future, and he said as much. But I want you to hear it from me, he said. I am committed to McLaren until the end of next year, and I am not walking away from the sport. Appreciate it hasn't always been easy. But who wants easy? I'm working my ass off with the team to make improvements and get the car right back to the front where it belongs. I still want this more than ever. See you in Le Castellet, Daniel. Now, do you know what's interesting about that statement? 
Yes, he does mention, I guess, present tense driving the race car. But there isn't any future tense about driving the race car. Because I absolutely believe, given the current information, given the vast amount of rumors, even before this came out, that Daniel Ricciardo potentially could be out at the end of this year. And I know there have been some statements made to the contrary that Daniel Ricciardo um, would not be released from McLaren. I don't think he will be released from McLaren. Because that's not how McLaren contracts work. Remember, when Felix Rosenquist was re-signed just a couple of weeks ago, it was he was re-signed as a flexible contract. Now, McLaren was much more um, willing to share information about what um, Felix Rosenquist would be doing, potentially, for McLaren next year. It was either he's going to be in Formula E or he's going to be in IndyCar. But I spoke to another driver who had re-signed with McLaren recently, and it's one Pato Award. I spoke to him at Mid-Ohio about contract details, specifically when dealing with McLaren. This is very interesting, and you really need to pay attention to it, because if you don't think that this also applies to a Formula One driver who's driving for Zach Brown, I got a bridge to sell you in Nebraska. Is your contract flexible? Is my contract flexible in what way? Formula One. Uh, that's a great question. I. It is. Like, if they want to grab me from here and take me to Formula One, then I'm pretty sure that's very possible. Uh, is it, like, written in there? No, but it's owned by the same guy or the same... Well, <laughs> Zach, right. Zach, Zach makes the call on both of them, so, yeah, he can pick and choose where he places me. Um, so, yeah, I guess to your question, yes, it is. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm locked in here for end of 2025. So I absolutely believe based on that Pato quote, that Zach Brown can move any of his drivers around any place he wants to. And that says to me, despite the fact that Daniel Ricciardo says, hey, I've got a contract with McLaren, I'm going to stay with them, it doesn't mean he's going to drive for them. He could be a test driver. He could go to Formula E. They could throw him into sports cars. There's a lot of things that they could do with Daniel Ricciardo. They could make him a team manager. They could make him a brand ambassador. They could make him a social media guy. I bet they could do whatever they want with Daniel Ricciardo. So it says to me that Zach Brown's intention here and the carrot that he laid out for Alex Pillow and the reason that you would burn a bridge with Chip Ganassi that really you didn't probably need to burn is that there is a Formula One seat guaranteed if Alex Pillow can get to McLaren. However, what's standing in the way of Alex Pillow and Zach Brown about making their new flame uh, or consummate their new flame? Well, it's Chip Ganassi's ironclad contract. Because I believe that Chip Ganassi holds all the cards in this situation. And ultimately, even if he loses Alex Pillow, which will be a long-term loss, no doubt about it, for the Chip Ganassi racing team. If Alex Pillow didn't want to be there anyway, maybe it's a bit of a long-term gain as well. But I think he's also going to make some short-term gains. So here's the thing. Because Chip signed this contract and because he has extensions, he is, in my opinion, the dominant person in this battle between Zach Brown and Chip Ganassi, or at least dominant contract battle. Because Chip has a lot of options that he can employ to um, make Alex Pelot's life, and I, I say this kind of in a joking manner, but I don't think it'll be a joking manner to Alex Pillow. He can make Alex Pillow's life miserable, in my opinion. There's a few options. Number one option. He can enforce the option, ironically, uh, the 2023 year onto Alex, meaning not only Alex has to drive the rest of the year, 2022 for Chip Ganassi, but he's going to force him to run the whole 2023 season for the team. Now, I think that would be a bad option, despite the fact that it would be certainly sadistic on Chip's part and certainly a bit of revenge. Um, it, it, we have seen with Alexander Rossi at, Al at Andretti Autosport that a driver who's checked out, uh, he's not coming back until he's actually signed a new deal and then he knows he's leaving and then he can kind of get back into the mental groove. So I, I, I don't think that's where it's going to end up. I don't think Chip Ganassi is just going to hang on to uh, Alex Pillow and have him drive for him. He could hang on to him, and that's going to be the third option. But the second option is, is pretty straightforward, cut and dry for Chip. 
it set a large buyout, whatever the maximum of the contract is, or if Alex Pelot didn't specify what the contract buyout was in his contract, Chip can set that at whatever he wants, and he could fleece the hell out of Zach if he wants to. Option three is what I'm going to call the Alex Lloyding. If you don't know who Alex Lloyd is, he's a driver who signed for Chip Ganassi Racing. Indy Lights driver signed to a development contract, thought he was going to be a target Chip Ganassi driver alongside Scott Dixon. Thought We all thought at the time he's the second coming of Scott Dixon. Well, he was essentially paid to sit at home and not drive. He got one race a year for a couple of years. That was the Indy 500, and that was kind of a bone that, that, he, uh, that chipped through to Alex Lloyd. But ultimately, Alex Lloyd was a top racing prospect that Chip Ganassi paid a salary to to essentially do nothing. There's a potential that Chip could just kick Alex Pillow out of that car, totally Alex Lloyd him, and then just say, you're going to sit until the end of 2023 and then go do whatever the hell you want, but I'm going to pay you out of spite to sit at home. Now, who could replace Alex Pillow? Well, there was a rumor that came out of Brazil last night that said Tony Kanaan could drive the 10 car as early as Toronto and that Chip Ganassi had reached out to do as much. Well, I spoke to a source close to the situation, meaning the Tony Kanaan situation, earlier today, and I got a pretty resounding no on Tony Kanaan doing any more races in the 10 car for Chip Ganassi Racing this season. And that being said, what I also learned is that Tony Kanaan's career with Chip Ganassi Racing may well not be done after all. But I'll just leave it at that. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Sebastian Bourdais would be a great option. However, when he tried to take over for Jimmy Johnson at Long Beach when Jimmy was injured, Cadillac said, uh, no way in hell you're driving a Honda. So... Then we're left with Ryan hunter Ray, who is also on the IMSA side and is only employed currently to run on the IMSA side. But should a need arise to put a driver in the 10 car, should Alex Pillow be Alex Lloyded, Ryan hunter Ray would seem to be the top prospect if that were the case. Here's what Zach Brown can do. And the options are a lot more limited. The only potential out for Zach Brown contract-wise would be that he could get around an Alex Pillow no-compete clause, especially if Alex Pillow gets kicked out of that ride by Chip Ganassi and he has to sit for a year. Because, of course, Chip Ganassi does not have a Formula E team, which I think is very unlikely that Alex Pillow would drive in next year. He doesn't have a Formula One team. Again, we go back to Formula One. So even if Chip is paying Alex to sit on the bench, Zach could possibly still have him, even as a test driver in Formula One and possibly as a full-time racer in Formula One. There's also the slightly more messy options. Like I said, the same option exists for Chip and Zach. There could be a big buyout. Zach could just pay Chip and then be done with it. The third one is where it gets really messy, and that's a lawsuit. Most people think that is unlikely to happen, but it is a possibility. Here are some loose ends. Let's say Polo has nothing to do with Aaron McLaren SP. Let's throw him out right now as a possibility for that third car. Though it is, I would say, a possibility. I would say it's unlikely given the contract situation as things stand as I sit here right now on July 13th of 2022. If Polo is the F1 driver for, Aaron Mc- or for McLaren... The third Aero McLaren SP seat becomes real simple because it's down to Reims VK and Felix Rosenquist. Now, here's what's very interesting. If Polo is not in that 10 car next year, Reims VK is also a front runner for the 10 car. And all of a sudden, it's Chip versus Zach again to get a driver. Funny how that works out. And if Chip wins out, hey, that means Felix Rosenquist will return to IndyCar in all likelihood next year. How crazy is this, huh? Um, Yeah. I hope this cleared some stuff up for you. Um, I tried to make this video as well-informed as possible. I, again, my opinion, based on the evidence and the facts that we have at this time, is that Zach Brown is trying to get Alex Pillow to Formula One, not IndyCar. But we'll have to see. There's going to be a lot more details coming out in the coming days and weeks and months. We'll see you then. Be sure to subscribe because we'll be talking about it.